Hi everybody, today I'm going to do an acrylic paint pour, but I'm going to turn it into a flower using negative space. So today I have a 12 by 12 canvas. I have a 10 ounce cup which is only filled about halfway. I have a dirty pour which contains pink, purple, and a little bit of white. So I'm going to, I don't need as much paint for this technique, so that's why it's only half full. So I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm going to cover this canvas. I'm going to let it kind of run everywhere. I'm going to let more of it run off today so it's a thinner layer for when I start to do the negative space. It makes it a little easier. I'll turn this so you can see what's happening. so I have some pretty good coverage here no silicone today it's just pouring medium paint and a little bit of water in fact I use about three quarters of my mixture is pouring medium and about a quarter of it is paint I use Nova paint which is a high quality paint so you need less of it um, but feel free to use craft paint, anything you want. It's all good. And I add just, a li just enough water to get to thin it down to, to where I want. So now I have full coverage. And I have some white mixed up in two different cups. I have them partially full. And the reason I have them partially full is I'm going to pour the white out onto the canvas and I want to have a little better control and as you know if you pour something that's very full you have a little less control than you do if it was partially full and also I'm using a paper cup instead of plastic because I'm gonna bend it so I have a little bit of a point point. and I am just going to pour around the outside of what is going to become a flower Let the white spread a little bit. Just starting with the top of the flower, not doing the whole thing at once. I'm going to keep my edges a little zigzaggy to make it an interesting shape. I'm thinking about a rose here. I hate to tell you because it may not look like that in the end, but that's what I have in mind. I'm going to let some of the white run. So now I have a, a big shape kind of in the middle. I'm going to let it stay with white borders all the way around. Now I'm going to, I have some green to make a stem and leaves and of course I can't resist putting making it into a dirty pour so I added a little blue I'll make a stem here and maybe some leaf shapes I'm 
and I can push this around with a stick. This is a this is a candy apple stick. I got it at a restaurant supply. It's one of my favorite tools. So I'm gonna push this around. And then I have some backup color. I used up all my dirty pour, but I have a little bit of a backup color. I'm gonna let this use some pink and add to it a little bit over here. I noticed the flower shape was starting to get a little pointy. So I'm trying to round it out a little bit more, but yet keep it interesting. I noticed my leaves have started to get a little bigger than I wanted them to, so I'm gonna let them run off a little bit. come back with some white trying to thin the leaves down a little bit more Now I'm looking to see what I want to do. I think this original pour needs to mix in a little bit more with the pink that I just poured. play with the shapes using a palette knife. This is this is actually it's a spatula that I got at a restaurant supply. I'm going to push this shape around a little bit. So you can see the white starts to mix in a little, but it's still interesting and it's still predominantly white around the outside. I have a flower shape, this stem and the leaves are very abstract right now. I'm gonna push some of this purple out into the pink, incorporate it a little better. I saved some purple, some straight purple, and I'm gonna do a little oval in the middle to give it a little a little bit of a look. I'm gonna drag this down so it looks kind of like a petal. Drag this out so I can create another little petal. And I'm dragging this purple around to give it a little bit more of an outline. And use some purple to create a, another petal shape. You can clean clean this up, make it more white, or leave it. I'll probably do just a little. Clean 
clean up that, make it back to white just a little bit. So this is wet into wet. You can also do it wet into dry. If I were to let this background dry, then you can come in and do the white later when it's dry. This is this is a little more free form. You never know what's going to happen. I enjoy both methods. I'm going to do just a little more of this leaf color. Drag some of this leaf color, make it look like the base of the flower. That's pretty cool. So there's a basic flower shape. Again, the negative space is the white. It's pretty wild and free form, but um, there is a there's a flower for you. When the video ends, the painting is still very wet. And I wanted to talk about what was going on in the few minutes after I ended this demo. So I'm going to turn this around. And I want to talk about a couple things I did. The purple and pink was starting to head this way. And I took... I took my palette and I drugged some green back in here because I wanted to build a base like a flower would have. I left this alone. This was in the initial part. I think I really like this. But I drugged this a little bit, made some more green come up here, and I also made I drugged some white into the stem and made it a little more skinny. But so that was the major thing that I did after the video ended. But I wanted to talk about what's happening here. I mean, I think Picasso said you start out with an idea and then it becomes something else. There's nothing more true than in this poor painting. But what I like here is this nice soft edge. Again, this is an impressionist, impressionistic flower. It's not meant to be a photograph. We're just getting the essence of a flower, the idea of a flower. I like this soft edge. Yet over here, it's a little bit of a harder edge. The purple that I poured here has kind of spread and done its own thing. So it looks better than it did when I first poured it. But you, it still gives the idea of a, the edge of a petal. This was a little swipe I did here, which I think is kind of a nice corner up here. And when I initially poured this pink... I'd used up all of my dirty pour, but I wanted to add to it, so I took this straight pink. And I thought, I'm not sure if that's going to look good, but when I drug the purple across it and then gave it some time where it, it blended, I think it really does add to it now. I didn't torch it, but some cells, a few cells came up. I don't think a flower needs a lot of cells. But a few came up, and it actually came up in the in what would be kind of the center of a of a rose. So that's kind of fun. So again, this is very wet, but it should stay put pretty much at this point. And I wanted to point out some different things that I did because again, you can help help things along. You're not don't be a victim. If you want to move something, you can move it. You can use your knife. Again, my favorite stick for small areas. So I'm pretty happy with it right now, and I wanted to uh, I wanted to point those things out. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gives you some ideas. Again, my name is Karen Goodrich. You can find me on Instagram. I have an Etsy shop with finished paintings. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.